Hi, I'm Lacey Sturm. Okay, so this is my philosophy is that politics and religion are the same, two sides of the same coin. Politics is all about whatever everybody else says is right, and religion is all whatever I say is right. But I don't think that's anything to do with Jesus, and I had an encounter with Jesus, and that's totally different from what I've seen of religion. You know, um, it's a personal relationship that you have daily, like, okay, I woke up again, God, I have breath, why? <laughs> what am I, why am I alive again? Because, um, you know, you never know if today could be your last. So I think the reason why people gravitate towards rock music is because they feel lied to by society or by religion. And so they're like, well, at least they're being honest. And I think that's why people love rock, and that's why I love rock. And I always was searching for truth, and there's a lot of truth in rock music. I mean, like, you know, people are like, feel condemned or judged or um, they, they feel like there's injustice and it needs to be righted. And I think, um, I mean, I, I agree with a lot of that. I think we, do, we have different modes, too, of how we, we re react to it and respond. And I have things to scream about, and they may be different from someone else's screaming, but I think the search for truth is the same. Writing music is really a way to um, just respond. I mean, it's just my response. Sometimes I get just like this, as an artist, I guess, a lot of artists that I've met are kind of like this way. They just sort of get overwhelmed. They're like, we're the kid that like pitch fits and just freaked out a lot. So like, oh wait, here, we can like put some red song, <laughs> you know what I mean, instead. And it actually is really um, touches on things people don't usually express. They can't express, but they feel. You know, and that's what I hear people say, you know, your music speaks to something that I feel but I can't express and I just feel like it said it, what I was thinking. You know, from the time I was like 14, I think, I started struggling with depression really bad, suicidal thoughts and all that, and I wouldn't be able to sleep. I was just thoughts running all the time, so I'd just get up and write until everything was out, and then I'd finally be like, oh, yeah, well, when I saw Nirvana, well, my brother went to a Nirvana concert um, when I was 12, and when he came back, he had tape actually it's back then they played at trees in Dallas and the <clears throat> my mom took my brother for his birthday and he came back with the tape and I had the only boom box in the house so he had a cup plate in my room and so um so when I listened to it at first I was like this is so different because I let my listen to pop music as a 10 year old you know like a lot of dual Mariah Carey and stuff you know <laughs> and um and Janet Jackson <laughs> and then um I'm listening to this music and it does it, it's, it's very poetic, but it's not even about the lyrics. What it is, it's about, wow, it's okay to feel sad and to express it in music. It's okay to be angry and express it in music. And it's not even about the lyrics as much as it's about the expression. It's like, I could hear this and be sad and like feel his anger and feel his like frustration. And that was just phenomenal to find music that was not about entertaining, it was about emotional vomit. It's like, Bleh! yeah, and you just want to go, yeah, that, you know what I mean? I get that. So, um, so that's what it is usually for me when I'm writing. And this album, it goes in different places, but the theme I think throughout the album when we said life screams is that life is always, it's, it's always giving us a message. And we, we, because we're so distracted, there's so much to distract us from what life's saying all around us. We can always be distracted from the lesson we need to learn. We can always stunt the, the growth of our soul by just distracting ourselves to death. And so we call the album Life, life Screams. And it's this concept of like everywhere you turn, if you want to grow, you can. Life will teach you. And it's screaming all the time something that you're wrestling with. I was an atheist who hated people and hated Christians especially and hated um, myself. And um, on the day I put him at suicide, I had encounter with God. And the next day I remember waking up like, why me? Like, why, why do you want me to be alive? Like, I didn't even believe in you and I hated all the people who loved you and talked about you. And when you connect with God, there's just, there's a feeling of understanding that just comes in. It's hard to explain. To me, when I meet people, the second thing I understood about God after I realized He loved me was that if there is a God that created us, then I mean, you know, I I used to be fan of bands and artists, 
and if I became a fan of someone, I would look at all their artwork. You know, like I'm like I gotta know about them. Like this says something about them. If you read all their lyrics and look at all their artwork and whatever, and all of a sudden it hit me that we are God's artwork. And so whenever I look at somebody, I'm looking at somebody who says something about who God is. You know, the God I encountered on the day of and suicide. I don't want to make it as simple as that you you feel special, but that you you have a unique DNA. No one else has it. How is that possible? Your fingerprint is different from everyone for a reason. There's not one snowflake that's the same on a mountain covered, you know, like their your uniqueness is so important. And people don't get that. We keep looking everywhere else and saying, Oh well they're cool, we'd be like them, especially rock stars, you know, they look, oh whoa, well, they're gonna be like them. But the thing is we all have something to contribute with our uniqueness. Otherwise, we'd all just, we could find people like us, but then you're unique. And you're not just, you know, special. You know, we're all special. But you actually are different, you know, in, a, in an important way. Anyway. I love that. That's super personal. <laughs> I want to end it on that because that's like a, one of the reasons why the fans love you. Each one of us feels special when we listen to your music. So thank you so much for all And thank you for being here. I'm gonna go find myself. <laughs> <laughs> You're beautiful. Sir, it's my soul. Thank you.